How would you like some diarrhea soup to go with your toilet paper mouth, little bitch? I'll show you how to suck a dick. And that is what I call being familiar with the taste of semen. What are you doing? Hmm? What are you trying candid photography now? Can candid foot? What? What are you talking about? Dude, you're holding a camera with a flash on it. I can see it. A, 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 what did you say? Dude, I'm looking directly at you. This is not candid. I saw your stupid finger press the shutter. Shut. What? Shut. You want the door shut? Go away, you idiot. It's not even what this video is today. It's long exposures. <sighs> looks a little better, right? Kinda got sick of the uh, grainy, shitty footage because it's gonna be dark soon. I kinda wanted to come out here and do some long exposures, dick around a little bit, try some new spots for cityscapes in Denver. I realize it's probably overexposed, but uh, I don't wanna pull my fucking ND filters out, so you can eat my shit if that's your problem. We'll see if we get stabbed. I'm used to going out with one camera and I've been stabbed zero times, but I don't know how the math changes when you start adding cameras, it could be exponential. And honestly, how many people are out here? If I chose one person to stab, it would be me. So there's a couple spots I wanted to try tonight. A couple spots that I drive past all the time and I just haven't gone out and shot. There's the few regular spots that everybody shoots of Denver. Uh, City Park, which is the, the lake over there, the pond or whatever the fuck you want to call it. And then there's across Spear which is like the iconic image of Denver. If you look up Denver skyline, that's the one you're gonna see. I don't know, I drive past this spot all the time. And while you can't really see downtown, I do think it has some nice foreground opportunities with this bridge and road, assuming that this road is still busy when it gets dark. It's kind of hoping for a sunset, but all the clouds have disappeared, so that's lame. But uh, and then once it gets dark, I'll shoot a couple over here and then I'll probably head down to Park Ave, which overlooks a little better view of the city and Coors Field. It looks a lot better over there. If you're watching this video, then one of two things happened. Either I made it home just fine, or I did get stabbed. And in which case, I wanna thank whoever found my SD cards, edited this footage, and then posted it to my YouTube channel. It's very kind of you. But I would really prefer if you didn't murder me. I guess now that doesn't really matter because I'm probably in a coma or something and you have all my belongings, but Nonetheless, thank you for doing what I was going to do with this footage in this uh, hypothetical future scenario of my internal bleeding and uh, loss of entrails. This isn't exactly the best part of town, and it is right next to a highway. And when you're next to a highway, people don't really give a shit, you know, because they're going fast. They're like, oh, you shouldn't stab people like that guy just did, but I'm already a block away now, so there's really nothing I can do about it. Anyway, I brought the Sigma 14 to 24. I brought the Sony 20 mil Prime one, uh, F18, and I brought the Sigma 24 to 70, just in case those are too wide. I don't think that's going to be a problem. This is a pretty big uh, expanse of metropolis over here, so it shouldn't be a problem. But I wanted to be safe. It is a heavy ass bitch of a lens, but whatever. I'm not doing that much walking tonight. And I brought my cheapo tripod because it actually uh, gets up higher. So I'm thinking about angling it further over in that direction and getting just the bridge and those buildings in the background. They're not exactly the prettiest of downtown buildings. All the really good ones are back behind them, unfortunately. I'm really hoping that uh, once it gets dark and I go over to Park Ave and take that shot, it's a little bit better. I tried a couple 10-stop uh, long exposures during the day just for fun, since I'm just standing here. With the 14 to 24, unfortunately, you can't put filters on the front of it because it's so bulbous that you have to slot them in the back. And I have some of those, but it's such a pain in the dick to have to pull the uh, lens off to switch filters. I still, I bought them like a year ago and I still have yet to use them for one thing. I want to, but it's just such a pain in the ass. And with the Freewell system that I've been using, 
It's just magnetic, you just drop them in. It's so nice. And to go to having to remove the entire lens, it's just a pain in the dick. This shot sucks, uh, dick. There's not really enough clouds for a good long exposure during the day, but just compositionally, it's just not very good. I pretty much gave up on that one. That shot just looks like shit. Maybe I'll try it again in the spring or something, summer. So I'm heading over to the other spot now. We'll see if we can get a better shot there. Now that the lights and stuff are on, I should be able to get some good uh, light trails. I guess I haven't really trusted the Lumix autofocus at nighttime. It took me about a minute to get focused just now because my other hand is holding this, so I was just sitting here waiting for it. This looks so sick over here though. I'm just hoping that I can get my camera up high enough to where the light trails don't completely block off everything else in the frame. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. It's a much better view of the city from over here. Much better. And the way that Park Ave runs, it basically runs right into downtown and right at the foot of Coors Field. So hopefully I can get a good angle on Coors Field, the Rockies logo, because it's nice and purple. It'll add some nice contrast to everything else. But the view of the city up here is like, kind of unparalleled in my opinion. City Park is good. And uh, the other side of the highway is pretty good. But uh, this spot, I mean, this is what most people see when they come into Denver is this. And you never really see photos of it. And maybe I'm about to find out why. Maybe it's uh, just a shitty spot to shoot, but I guess we'll see. I am gonna have to go in the median though. So uh, if there's any drunk people out there driving up on curbs and shit, maybe that guy is the one that'll have to upload this video. Unless he hits me, realizes that I'm half dead, gets out of the car and stabs me to death, and then takes my camera, edits this footage and uploads it. Basically in the middle of the highway, it's like basically an on-ramp into the city. If we could ever, uh, you know, see it. Lumix, please, can we, can we look at it? Thank you, you fucking idiot. But yeah, this nice entrance to the city is one of my favorite spots because it just leads right to the base of downtown and you get a really good view. definitely gonna have to do some blending of some of those images. I tend to set up a composition and take like 20, 30 shots, depending on the flow of traffic and stuff, especially when you're shooting in the middle of the road like that. The tail lights always look great and you can always emphasize those, but they're much dimmer than the headlights. So I end up having to take a bunch of shots, you know, wait until there's a bunch of people going away from you and get a nice thick tail light, and then uh, wait until there's just one or two cars coming towards you and then blend those two because if you get really heavy traffic the left side which is where they're coming at you from is always going to be way brighter as far as i can tell though i did not get uh stabbed uh at all uh, i'm not a doctor though so i'm not 100 percent sure you know i uh, i didn't study you know marine psychology or anything like that but um All right, Future Carry here. So I edited these the other day, and uh, it's just much easier for me to, to do them early in the morning where I can just have my headphones on and listen to music or listen to a podcast or something while I'm editing. So I figured I would just edit, record it, and then do the voiceover later. I'm not going to go through the whole editing process. Um, maybe that's something we can do in the future if that interests you. I really didn't do a whole lot to these, but what I really wanted to show you was just the reason that I take multiple frames like this and uh, the way that I blend them in Photoshop and then everything after that is just sort of your run-of-the-mill editing. So what I'm about to do here is start blending these in Lightroom. Um, oh. Oh, I guess past me has a, a message. Okay. Oh, right, that's just unnecessary. That's, I mean, can we just get back to the, to the editing, please? We're kind of trying to do something here. Okay. Well, I, I guess there's just no talking to you, is there? God, I used to be such an asshole the other day. Let's let's get back to it, can we, please? What does that even? That's that's disgusting. Come on, let's let's go. Thank you. So anyway, the first thing that I always do is I just make sure that the temperatures and exposures match. It, it can be a little bit tricky, but usually if you just match whatever Kelvin rating in Lightroom one has to the other, you're usually okay. 
Uh, exposure is a little more tricky because these were obviously taken at slightly different times and they're long exposures and stuff like that, but usually you can get it close enough. So once you get those kind of matched, open them both or three or four or sometimes like five or six into Photoshop as layers. And then you're going to select both layers and go to auto align. This just makes sure that any bumps that you had into the camera or something like that, that they're perfectly aligned because they're always off by at least a few pixels. And that'll just ruin perceived sharpness. So now I'm just kind of hiding the layers and looking at what I want to keep from each frame. Um, I'm definitely going to get rid of the very bright left side because it's just completely blown out. And I think that it's a little bit better to have a little bit more subdued uh, headlights. Um, I could have gone for slightly brighter than this, but I think this works. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer mask for the top frame. And then I'm just going to paint in black paint away the parts that I don't want from that frame. So all I'm really doing here is I'm just, I'm letting in the red from the underneath frame back into the top frame, just to sort of blend the red side, because the red is generally underwhelming and the, the white lights are generally really overwhelming. So just make sure that your brush is at 100% opacity, 100% flow, unless you want to ease in the brush, but usually I just do it this way and I just adjust the size of my brush and just be really careful not to paint in too much to where it looks unnatural and weird. But anyway, I guess that's it. I don't really want to get too deep into this. Um, like I said, I'm willing to do like a full edit or something, but usually I, I feel like people would just fall off at that point anyway. So let me know if that's something you want to see and we'll, we'll just do a whole video like that. But we'll just go ahead and show you the photo now. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, make sure to subscribe or whatever you want to do to buttons and stuff with your fingers or just don't stick them in anybody's holes. And uh, unless they ask you to. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one.